Okay. You call this finance committee meeting on April 19, 2016, 6 p.m. to work. Before the meeting begins, as a courtesy to those in the audience, you are being reported here, not only by city council. Is there anybody in the audience who is also reporting? If you would just give us a show of hands, please, as a courtesy. Anybody else? None. Thank you. We have one item on the agenda tonight, and that's to discuss the petitions for the proposal for the bids for Central Park. It is my understanding that um, the East Lake has a spokesperson. Would that spokesperson please join us here at the table? Mm -hmm. Any All members of council have their proposals, and I will turn it over to Mrs. Jessica Trevisano at this time. All right. Um, well, thank you for having me here. It means a lot to us that you guys took the time to look over our proposal. Um, I trust that everybody has uh, read through what I sent over last week, but just in case, I'll kind of go through um, what we're hoping to do and how we're hoping to do it. Um, so the purpose of this proposal is to try to keep Central Park freely accessible to the public. So we want to make sure that you know, the public is able to access um, this resource that has been a huge part of our community for years and years. Um, so what we are asking is that we lease um, the two parcels of land that I have listed. Um, and what we intend to do, at least at the beginning, um, is just to either remove or repair the structures on the parcels um, that are currently in disrepair. So what that would mean is taking down um, most of the fences, except for probably the backstops. We would try to either repair or replace the backstops. Um, and then we actually have a donation of dirt, so we would be able to um, rejuvenate those active infields. Um, and then from there, we will maintain the grass. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, we've also talked about we have a donation to redo the roof on the pavilion, um, so we'd be able to have that fixed. We'd be looking to paint the structures and just make them look more aesthetically pleasing. Mr. Zorn. I, I do have some questions, but I also had a question first for uh, Attorney Kramer um, regarding the, uh, the lease with the Croatian um, organization. Uh, is there an opt-out clause if for some reason the um, soccer fields are not uh, uh, put together within a, a set amount of time? If there's a non-performance part of it. I would have to uh, review it, but I'll try to do that now while you continue. Um, I, uh, I do have some other questions. Um, I, I think it's extremely generous offer. Your, I read in here your, your honeymoon fund. Uh, your, your uh, plan up to you know, start this endeavor. Um, but do you have any dollar figures for the donations that you that you've raised, and also, you know, how much altogether with the honeymoon fund and any? revenues you've generated so far for, for this project? Yeah, so right now um, we have $4,520 in like cash that we would be able to use. Um, and then we also have the donation of dirt, the donation um, of roofing supplies as just the, you know, the starting donations. I don't have values for those two donations, um, but I do have, as I attached to the proposal, the estimate for removing the fences. Um, removing the fences should cost only around $6,000, and we're pretty close to that already, and that's, you know, without having the lease, it's a little difficult to ask businesses to donate to something that may or may not happen. Um, I have about a dozen people who said that they're willing to throw fundraisers, you know, like 50-50 raffles, or um, just all sorts of different events to fundraise money, and then... I mean, once we get dirt on the infields, there's all sorts of opportunity to raise funds by hosting tournaments and having different events on the fields. Um, so I am also willing, I mean, in the proposal, we say that we'll have those, those fences down by September. And I'd be 
willing to put a term into any sort of lease that says, you know, if the fence is not down by September, the lease terminates and you guys can decide what to do from there. Something like what you were asking Mr. Clamer if they had in the ACL lease. Um, that way, it makes sure that we actually do what we are proposing. I had a few additional questions. Um, um, I had a question regarding the uh, phase one, regarding the, the school board, uh, mm -hmm. school district. Have you contacted anybody at the school district? I have. I actually uh, met with Steve Nedlick today. Um, he said that he believes that the school uh, will be totally okay with us removing all of the fencing. Um, and then he also <laughs> said that he um, thinks that the board would be open to coming going into some sort of like joint use agreement where if we did want to develop those fields into anything different, um, such as, I don't know, putting like temporary soccer fields there or other softball fields, he thinks that the district would be totally open to that. But he said that we can remove all those fences on the school district property as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Zoll. Uh, I have additional questions. Um, um, you may have, have touched on this before um, in your comments a few minutes ago, but did you have a dollar figure for the demolition of the pavilion, accessory structures, concession stand? I know you briefly said, talked about that, but can you go over that one more time? Sure. So I'm pretty confident that they won't need to be de demolished. I think that there might be some repairs that we need to do. We haven't actually been able to go into the structures yet to see, you know, to get any sort of estimates um, once we got into the structures and we, if we found out that there was some sort of, you know, huge issue that needed to be, like, caused that either thing needed to be repaired. But they are, they're in pretty good shape from what it looks like. Um, it looks like it'll mostly be paint and maybe a couple patchwork jobs here and there, but it doesn't look like there's anything hugely wrong with them so far. So, no, we don't have an estimate, but... Um, I don't think that they will need to be demolished. Uh, I, I, Mr. Rubin, um, I agree with that. I don't think there's a need. To, it's not a necessity. The interior of the building is pretty intact. So there might be some cosmetic work inside, wall repair. I guess the only thing would be the outside structure would be the roof and the building itself. The pavilion solid. Mm -hmm. The roof would be the other issue. But right. We have a debate. So the building the itself, it's, interior wise, it's pretty intact. In that regard, so. Mr. Zern. Um, thank you. Um, I had a question regarding the maintenance and what has been uh, created for maintenance of the, the lawn, the grass. Um, it's just it's briefly covered in, on page two. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you've done to uh, make sure that that would be taken care of on a regular basis. Right. So we have um, one member of uh, these community partners. Uh, he's here today by Floyd. He has a commercial lawnmower and has said that he would be willing to maintain the grass. And, of course, we'd enter into some sort of formal agreement to make sure that that actually occurred. Um, we've also contacted Harvey from the MRGD program. That's the program that's in the Washington Elementary Building EPAL. right now. Or EPAL. Oh, they're in EPAL, sorry. Mm -hmm. that's um, so they're in the EPAL building. And part of what that program does is teach adults with disabilities how to do certain you know, tasks, um, and the individual who runs that program has said that he would love to have some sort of partnership with us where they help us maintain the grounds as a way to help those adults um, learn more about lawn maintenance and lawn care and get those sort of skills. So we have two different organizations or two different methods to maintain the lawn, one from the MRGD program and the other would be Byron. That brings up my question. Is Mr. Floyd here? Yes. Okay, Mr. Floyd, my questions are going to be towards you. Sure. Are you insured and bonded through the city of Eastlake? Am I? Yes. No. Do you own a professional I, lawn care company? No. No. <clears throat> Mr. Sir. Question for the chair. Um, <clears throat> since you maintain the EPEL um, property, uh, how many people... Have you visually seen using this property daily, weekly? Can you get, give a number? I don't know if it changes during the winter or the summer, but if you can give me an estimate on how much this is used at this point. 
That's a difficult question. I'll answer it to the best of my abilities. And I'm answering from EPAL, not as a council. It is very, very sparsely used during the day. You may see one or two people up there walking their dogs. Over the course of the last year that EPAL has been in that building, there's been no softball activity up there aside from an occasional five or six guys coming up to have practice or something like that. It, 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 it's a crying shame that it's used so so if, if I may add. Uh, you recognize Mrs. Trevisano. Um, if I could just add, so I've been up at the park, I don't know, all the time recently um, for various occasions. I think we were there two nights ago and there was a group of ten people who were using one of the fields for softball practice. We had a meeting at the park in the morning on Sunday from 11 to probably noon and I think we saw four people walking their dogs through the park. Um, Every time I've been there I think I've seen somebody who I didn't invite to the park using it in some way. Um, and I often ask them, like, did you know, like, anything that's happening with this park? Do you know, you know, what we've been talking about? And it was always, no. So then we'd stop and tell them, like, well, like, here's, you know, our proposal, here's what's happening. Um, I mean, I'm not there all the time, but I know when I am there. I've been surprised and pleased with the number of people who I've seen using the park. And that's not just as somebody who's trying to keep it, you know, accessible to the public. That's this resident. Sorry, I can't recognize, but... We'll recognize the public after the meeting. We'll keep the uh, council members' questions going first, please. Okay. My next question, mm-hmm. and it will go to you, the insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, it says you will hold $1 million worth of insurance and property damage insurance in the amount. Um, are the people on your committee insured under this policy? We don't have a policy because we don't have the lease yet. Okay. Would they be insured under this policy? I um, don't feel confident answering that question quite yet because we don't have the lease yet. I haven't you know, contacted multiple different insurance companies. I haven't found any quotes. It's hard to get a quote for insurance for property that I don't have a lease over. Um, if it is something required by the city, then of course we would cover everybody um, who's a part of the ECP, but um, I... That would have, be, have to be something that I look into further. Um, we did get a quote uh, for insurance, like the $1 million policy, and it was a reasonable quote. I don't know if it included you know, the individuals who are part of BCP, but it was a quote, it was a quote for the property. So. Was the insurance quote for an exact $1 million, or is there an aggregate clause on there? Do you know? I, you'd look at the insurance, not me. I think it's like $1 million. With $2 million, I think it might have been aggregate. But I'm not sure we haven't really delved into the insurance at this early stage. Um, Mr. Fudge. Just for the record, um, uh, Tracy, that was Angela from Sun oh. speaking. Um, I want to go back to the lawn maintenance area. I understand you'll take care of the lawn, but you also have spring cleanup and fall cleanup that has to be done. Okay, is that included? Absolutely. Any other questions from any other members of council? Mr. Zern. Um, I have a question for Attorney uh, Klamer. Um, If the under... In page one under phase one, uh, the items that I discussed are removing the fence. Uh, you're talking about their proposal? Yeah. I don't have that. Their proposal. All right. uh, it talks about removing the fence structures. I believe there's five of them. Um, also, demolition and repair of pavilion, uh, accessory storage structure, concession stands, um, I believe there was something about this scoreboard. I, uh, but if that is not, uh, there's also a timeline on page two, which is September 30th. If that is not completed by September 30th, will that void the contract? Well, I think like your question earlier to me on the Pollution Center proposal, this is just their proposal. We can put whatever 
terms you would want to put in there. So if you wanted it like we do here, if they don't live up to, if they don't, if the Croatian Center doesn't submit plans that the city can review in sole discretion and don't follow through with the improvements and you have the right to terminate this, you can include similar provisions like that. And as far as the timeline goes, you know, don't need to touch on anything else. Thank you. Mr. Spott. Question about the maintenance. If the gentleman who do the lawn <coughs> maintain the surfaces of the fields themselves, that's a different project. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, you want me to elaborate? Yeah? Okay. I, um, <clears throat> as far as the field itself, I, I have just more I have more than commercial equipment than just a lawnmower. I have a gator, um, another tractor that we can use to drag the fields, um, but also um, other leagues. Uh, for instance, David Godshell, who helps run a league down at Bruce, he takes care of that field. Uh, he's interested in also uh, doing some things over there with us. Uh, we have support of <clears throat> Softball Hall of Fame, uh, all kinds of uh, support in the softball community to maintain the fields and keep them nice. <clears throat> okay. My question is, he just said you have support from the softball community. Name them. Who are they? From the softball? From the softball? No. My question is to you. Okay. Um, so yeah, from the softball too. community, I know that Byron has talked to the Softball Hall of Fame and they've shown their support. He's talked to the current president of the U.S. SSA who has shown their support. Um, I have talked to, not Rosemary, but Stacy Lang, who's also involved in Eastland Girls Softball. Um, she said that although Rosemary currently isn't interested, Stacy is interested in helping us fundraise, and she's really passionate about helping us fundraise. Um, David Godshall from the, he does the co-ed league, and he helps um, maintain the Bushy Park. He's also shown his support. Um, I think that's four mm -hmm. different leagues that have um, in some way said that they you know, are supportive and they would love to use the park or they need the space to use those fields. Um, I think it's also important to note that we want them to be more than just softball fields. I mean, we do want to maintain the dirt. We want to. Please. We're trying to record this. It's very difficult for our girl in the office to hear everything. So if we have side conversations going on, please wait to be recognized by the board. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Um, so I think it's important to know that we want this to be more than just softball fields. So although we want to maintain the dirt and make sure that softball can be played on those fields, um, by removing a lot of those <coughs> outer fences, you'll be able to you know, play soccer there. There's enough room for a football field back there. Um, you can play rugby. I mean, there's all sorts of opportunity for groups to play at that field once you remove the fences that are encroaching the field currently for the park currently. Mr. Zer. Um, <clears throat> I had a question regarding the softball fields. Um, it, it specifically says softball fields. It doesn't give a number. Is there a number that you're proposing will be in this park, number of softball fields? Yeah, so it was it was unclear because I wasn't sure where the Willoughby East Lake Field stood. Um, <coughs> I think that we would like to, you know, maintain all five of them if we can. Um, we'd be willing to, I mean, if somebody from the city has another idea or thinks that some of that land would be better used for something else, um, then we'd be open to adjusting that number. But as long as there's a demand for all five fields, then we can get the dirt for all five, and I think we can get the people to maintain all five softball fields. Um, but like I said, we still want the we want the park to be able to be used for other things as well, not just softball. Thank you, Mr. Rubentine. Just to clarify, we the, the city does not own all five fields, mm -hmm. so a couple of those are Washington Elementary. Um, to, just to clarify that, that it's, we have three fields that are city oh. fields, and then you have a fourth field that is I think it's a boundary issue that we've. You know, use it in the past, and then the other two fields would be Washington Elementary Schools, but mm -hmm. not to Willoughby Lake Schools. And when I, I spoke to Willoughby Schools yeah. today, and they said that they were willing to let us continue to maintain those fields, or he was pretty confident that the board would be okay with that. Any other questions from Tom? Mr. Kassin. If, if, uh, you're not granted a lease for this property. Do you intend to turn your attention to other parks in the community, or 
uh, is this uh, pertain, pertain only to Central Park? Sure, that's a good question. Um, I think whether or not we're granted this lease, we are interested in looking at other parks in the community and um, making sure that, I mean, we want this whole community and parks in the community uh, to be used by the public. So, I mean, either, either way, we'll, we'll be looking at other parks, too, and doing what we can. Um, right now, we're focusing on this park because this is the one that the public might lose a lot of its, its access to, and that's why we're here with this proposal, um, because we want to make sure that this park is freely accessible to the public, that the public doesn't have to pay to use the park, you know, at their leisure. But just because we're granted this lease doesn't mean that we won't look at other parks in the community as well. What if you're not granted this lease? Oh, I mean, I'm not going to retaliate by stop by not caring about the city. I will certainly still care about other parts of the city, even if I'm not, even if we're not granted this lease. Okay. Um, my next question: You mentioned demand for softball because it's been my understanding that softball and baseball have declined in popularity over the over recent years, particularly among young people. Um, what has anybody assessed? What is the demand? And if there is a high demand, how come those fields aren't being used? How come nobody has stepped in yet and, and, re and offered to repair them or anything? Um, so I don't have anything more than anecdotal evidence for you. Um, I know by talking to lots of different groups, um, there is a demand for rec leagues that's rising. Right now, a lot of people are doing travel ball, and that's... Um, Stressful to families to have to, you know, pay for travel ball, pay to travel, all of that. Um, from when I've talked to, or when Byron has talked to different groups, um, softball groups, they've all said, you know, like, if you fix up these fields, we'd love to be there. Um, when I was at the park on Sunday, I'd actually heard about, I guess, Eastlake Girls Softball last summer tried to, um, like, clean up two of those fields. Um, so they, you know, spent their time and energy to take out the weeds on those fields and try and make them playable. They had two practices there, and then Willowick boys softball or baseball came in and played on those fields and kicked out Eastlake girls softball. Um, so I think that there there might be some demand, and that's I mean just stories that I've heard um, from people in the city. Um, I think that there might be some demand, but because there isn't a central organization to help you know, schedule when the fields are going to be used and who's going to maintain them and when they're going to be used. I think it's uh, difficult for groups to put themselves out there to maintain the park if they don't know that they're going to have access to those fields in the future. Um, last thing, I just wanted I, I mean, I, I kind of hope that... Um, I thought that the Croatian Lodge took over this property, and that's really a non-transferable deal. We can't really tell them to go to Bruce E. Park or anything like that. But I think it would be great if we have community resources, if people would help to repair Bruce E. Park, because I was just there today, and I took a lot of pictures. And that park looks horrible compared to even Central Park. Like, it's way worse. We have graffiti all over the walls. We have... Um, and this park is supposed to be a memorial, so I just wanted to point that out, that if we have community resources to, um, I, I'm, not, I'm sorry, this isn't a question, this is just my personal opinion, but if we have community resources to fix the park, I think that it would be a moving tribute to the late Mr. E to um, fix Bruce E. Park, and here's some pictures if anybody cares to, cares to see them. And if I can, I mean, I'd like to respond to that. I, um, I think, I mean, I think all of our parks in East Lake are valuable. I think that we have a shamefully small amount of public green space that our residents are able to use. And I think we need to save it all. I think we need to preserve it all to make it freely accessible for the public. Um, I think that community resources aren't, they, they aren't, as limited as I think some people feel they are. So if we, let's say that we are granted the lease at Central Park and we are able to hold tournaments there, then we'll be able to make money and that money can go to other parks in the community. So it could go to fixing up Bruce um, And then, 
I mean, if softball leagues are playing at Central Park, then they can also continue playing at UC. Um, and we, we have people who are currently maintaining Bushy Park. Um, I know that David Dodge Hill is. Um, maybe it's still in disrepair. Um, but I, I think it's the wrong way to look at parks to say, you know, you like ACL, you take the you take Central Park, and then ECP, you guys take Bruce e. I think that all of the parks in East Lake should be freely accessible to the public, not just you know one or two. <coughs> Any other questions? Any other comments from council? Mr. Rudentino, did you have something? Um, I would have a statement later if it, if it gets in that, but it's sort of now. Well, you know, 25 years I've been in this community working here in this city, and um, not out of context, no disrespect to the members that are here trying to get this going, but I hear a lot of ifs, and unfortunately we've been through many, many, many volunteers, and nothing's etched in stone as far as I can tell other than a lot of promises, and unfortunately... They're only as good as the day they come to, to show up. You know, prime examples of the Unification Committee where, you know, we have people that are willing to come and they never come. I, I don't know about girls softball actually doing any work over there at the fields, nor anybody kicking them out. Two years ago, in the, the youth softball was there, boys softball was there, and it was declining for four years prior to that. So it's been an ongoing process. Unfortunately, the funding from the city has not been there. Whether they can afford to do it or not, it, it's just not there. The past administration has abandoned any maintenance on those fields other than cutting the grass. Um, that's my, you know, and I, I applaud them. I, I do, you know, that they're stepping up. I think it's kind of late. It is, you know, two years after the fact. It's four or six years after the fact that this, these fields have been in decline. And... Um, you know, the volunteers are great, but they're only good when they're here. I mean, they don't, they just, you know, I can go, go back to my 25 years. It's, they just don't last. And, you know, the, the promises can be made a mile long, and tomorrow if he can't make it here and the field's getting underwater, then, you know, where are we at? Um, my understanding also, I, I don't know if Randy, you can correct me on this, they're only talking about the first two fields for the Croatian Lodge, right? Uh, and then it leaves the third field and Washington still available. So they're not going to cut off access to field number three. This is to my knowledge. I could be wrong. Here's the drill. But field number three is not in the plans to be removed or taken out of there, nor is the Washington field. So how would that, I guess my question is, how does that impact the availability of those four fields not to be able to play on, even though Croatian Lodge is in there with their soccer field? I mean, when you, when, sorry. This is true, son. Yes. Uh, we, uh, we took, like, a Google map version and, you know, placed these, you know, these fields on it from the ACL, and they just don't fit without encroaching onto that field, uh, that field, field number three. Field number three. Right. But, I mean, maybe, maybe there's an orientation that I didn't try, um, but there was just, it was just not, it just wasn't possible. Um, and I'd also like to just respond. Um, I mean, we're more than volunteers. We're entering into a lease agreement with the city where there are legal repercussions if we don't follow through. So, um, but are your finances actually stopped? Is everything that you're proposing to put out there? And this is my personal question. So, I, you know, is everything there right. that you're saying is here? And I mean, I'm reading yeah. everything that's on here. Mm -hmm. it, it appears to me, and I. Whether the word is volunteer or not, it appears to be volunteer. Right. I don't see um, anything other than the fact that you have someone that's willing to do the roof, someone that's willing to maintain the field, someone that's willing to do the dirt, no names of who's giving it, what value there is to that. So my question is going to be, as it has been, is the volunteers. And I may be wrong in using that word, but to me it's a, it's a sense of volunteering. So and I, we've been that route many, many, many years. And I'm not saying your isn't going to be different and they're going to succeed, yeah. but I haven't seen it yet. And, and I, you have something etched in stone as opposed to something that we're hoping could happen. I'm saying you're just, you know. I think, that's, I think that's a valid concern, and it's also a concern that I've shared about the ACL lease, because really when you read the ACL lease, there isn't much in there that forces them or, I guess, like, 
requires them to do certain work or shows, you know, they don't show exactly how they're going to. So let's, let's, right. Um, but, uh, let's deal with the facts, but not opinions. That's, that's good. I mean, it's she's okay. right. It's a, I, I mean, that's, that's what's right. Right. Mr. Mr. Kramer. But I think what you're expressing, and that this, this whole thing we, it just became complicated, and if we could just make sure that everybody from the community understands that this, it's not a competition of right. whose project is better. But ultimately, if the city's going to consider a proposal, they're going to come to somebody like me, Mr. Rubertino, to a certain degree, the finance director, and they're going to say, what organization has the, has the wherewithal to, to satisfy its obligations under the lease agreement? Whatever it is. And, and you do that with any comparison. And I think ultimately, look, nobody in, in their wildest dreams is going to ask you folks to use your honeymoon Fine. Okay, it, that's that's just that's not the way any community works. But it also points out to the fact that we're not giving a, a detailed analysis as to how much this project is going to cost and where the financing is to come from. And I think that's Nick's concern. I mean, we over the years, I mean, these people in the city. I mean, we have lawyers on council, cops. I mean, these people have been through these same problems. For the, I've been here for some 15 years. For the better part of 15 years, we've heard different leagues fighting with each other. Somebody's not mowing the lawn. Why is this person there? Why are the weeds too high? It, it's not, and if we had a rec department, you know, your scheduling issue is dead on it. If we had a central scheduling way to do those things, a lot of those prob problems could settle themselves, but we don't have that resource. So the question is, is what the added benefit of having an organization like the Croatian Center, and they just happen to be the only one with a, with a synergy being nearby with parking and a commitment to soccer, which is probably the biggest sport in East Lake. I mean, let's be candid. I mean, the Croatian community, especially in the sport in Northeast Ohio, is immense. Um, the investment they're going to make is not only do they have the wherewithal to live up to their obligations, but the improvements they're making have a capitalized life well in excess of putting some paint on some walls and repairing the roof. And I think ultimately that's what you're hearing in a lot of these questions is the proposal that you have thus far, I know it's just on paper, maybe it gets better from there, but we're talking about some paint and doing some roofs to just get by. Um, the Creation Center has a proposal to put in basically state-of-the-art, we can't say world-class because it's still in East Lake, Ohio league, but these are leagues that travel across the country to these tournaments. I mean, they're, they're first-class facilities for soccer. And although during a period of time they'll have, in a sense, the first right to use those facilities because their scheduling is so complicated, in the long term those facilities theoretically become the cities. So it's not just repairing a couple of pavilions, it's finding a way to make massive improvements to the community at low or no cost to the city to give all these people their park that they want. That's what this. That's what the mayor and council are hoping that this relationship with the Croatian Center or whoever it might be that has that same wherewithal, what they're hoping to do is to work hard and smart to bring to the community an awesome recreational facility at little or no cost to the city. That's great government. And I think ultimately that's the concern. Nobody wants to hurt anybody's feelings, but we're going to need to find that wherewithal for you guys to live up to that contractual obligation. So the fact that the contractual obligation exists, which you referenced, that's only part of it, because all that all of breaking a contract into is lawsuits. It's the wherewithal that we care about, because cities don't want to go through that type of stuff. But it seems to me that there's a proposal here that they have that is not only good to the city, but if we work that as a framework, can provide the other residents, the softball facilities and those other types of things that they think might be wonderful or, or appropriate. I think there's an opportunity there instead of the, the fighting. I know that's well beyond the, uh, the legal analysis, but I think it speaks to the importance of the company. Mrs. Trevisan. Yeah, um, I, think, I think you bring up some good points and some reasons that members on this council um, are in favor of the American Croatian Lodge lease. My concern um, and part of what I think our proposal provides is a park that I think the city could maintain. So in 15 years... No, I couldn't hear her because you were calling. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was an important thing that she was saying. Sorry. Um, I think that our proposal is a park that the city could maintain. So in 15 years, 
our city could cut some grass. We're confident that our city can cut some grass in 15 years. In 15 years, I don't know if our city is going to be able to maintain state-of-the-art soccer facilities. I know that if what we do, and I, I, let's be clear, our main objective is we want to, we just want to remove a lot of that fencing that's preventing us from having a seven-acre green space. Um, once we do that, then I know that that's a park that our city can use not just tomorrow and not, you know, for the next 15 years, but for 50 years because we're going to be able to maintain the lawn. I hope, I hope our city can cut grass for the next 15 years, but I guess I don't actually know. Um, so while they might be able to put in whoever knows how much money worth of soccer field improvements, um, those are improvements that the ACL will get the most of the use out of. And even when they revert back to the city, I don't know if the city is going to be able to maintain them. And then the city is going to be faced with fencing that they have to remove. We're going to be in the same position in 15 years. Um, what our group is trying to do is not to provide some sort of fancy and um, you know, state-of-the-art facility, but we're trying to create a park that our residents can enjoy for 15 and 20 and 30 and 50. I, I want to address some of the financials mm -hmm. real quick. You have a quote from Best Buy Fence Supply for six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to remove fences. This does this quote does not include removing scoreboards and electrical it does. wires. Um, it's not and clear it's on not here. On the quote. I know, um, and I could get back to him if you'd like, and then follow up. But when we talked to him, um, and he gave us this quote, I mean, first we talked uh, in person, and then on the phone. Um, he was clear that it included, you know, the scoreboards and everything else that was on the... The total on this exceeds the amount that you say you have by nearly $2,000. It does. That's a major concern for me. Okay, and I think... Also, mm -hmm. you, I don't think you've taken into consideration other bills, utility bills, electric, water. Those have to be considered. Um, Ms. Shindell, were you able to pull those up today for me? I was not able to find any water bills, but I have been able to find the electric. For the last two months, it's running approximately $300 a month. You, so the water bill... For what specific... I'm, I'm just confused. What's the, the water bill comes through the community center, which is paid by EPEM, so that is another stumbling block that we have. That is uh, run through uh, our meter and our sewage, I do believe. I believe that's correct. What's the is the electric for the concession stand? Is it what is the electric? Is it for I the have a property number on here? That I just don't have details as to exactly what's causing the electric to be running. Interesting. I'm just Mr. Rubens, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the the price of the Cost of electricity does seem exorbitant to me. Yeah. You know, in a building that's empty, yeah. you know, there are coolers in there. And, you know, and I believe that we've cut the power to those coolers. The meter does go to that building. The best, you know, we've only got this today, just so you know that. Uh, Ms. Shindell and myself talked earlier, and you know, I'm going to look into it. I'm going over there tomorrow to see, you know, what. It, for the life of me, I don't know what's three hundred dollars. I don't have that at all. It's your beer, so I <laughs> <laughs> no, don't drink beer. <laughs> but it does, it does seem exorbitant. I mean, right. my whole house with two kids doesn't cost me a hundred dollars a month, let alone three hundred dollars a month. So, if there's coolers or something in there that are running, you know, that could be the only issue I see that would get it to that that figure. It seems exorbitant to me as well. You know, the water does run through PAL um, or that building, the community center itself. So. That would be something I see that does have to be addressed, but the electricity does seem kind of crazy. And I'd like to go back to a, an additional quote. I assume this is for backstops, fencing. An additional quote for another almost $2,300. Right. So that is if we wanted to buy all new backstops. Looking at the backstops, I'm fairly confident we could maintain, like we could keep up the backstops that are there. I might have to get um, another quote well, to just to verify. Um, I mean, I know the funding is the, the most difficult part of this proposal, and I think that if you are to look at any new nonprofit, the funding would of course be 
uh, a challenge. It is also something that, I mean, we've been working for, what, one week, and we already have <coughs> donations of a roof. We have donations of dirt. We have um, donations from different members of the community, and we don't have lease agreement in hand. Um, so we haven't even gone up to businesses to say, you know, we're trying to build this park for the community. Do you have, you know, any funding that you could provide us? Because it, without the lease in hand, who's going to say yes? I think that that's a uh, difficult to ask businesses to do. There's also all sorts of grants that we would be eligible for. Um, I know that there are difficulties in actually receiving grants, um, but that's still a potential funding source. Like I said, there are dozens of people who have told me that they'd be willing to throw fundraisers. Um, and, I mean, frankly, I don't think that the lack, so the lack of funding is something that me and my group would have to come up with and we would have to deal with. And I know that it is something that, as council, you don't want to you know, just sign a lease agreement. Um, handing us over some land without us being able to pay for it, but we are only $2,000 short of paying to take down the fencing, and if we don't get that done by September 30th, then you can terminate our contract. And you're more than two. You're more than $2,000 short. You haven't secured or taken into consideration the exact cost of an insurance policy yet. Maybe $3,000. <laughs> 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 they can be quite expensive. <laughs> All right, Mr. Fletch. But what you're asking us to do is to take a sure thing that we have that's going to benefit the community, that's mm. going to draw hundreds of people here every weekend, that's going to fill up our restaurants and our hotels and put these like on the map for some people. And, and that's a sure thing. And they're funded, and they're a 501c3, and they have their status. Um... And you want us to compare that to an uncertain. And I think you have, I, I love what you're doing. I think it's great. Um, I think your energy might be in the wrong place. When you talk about green space and the city of Eastlake, there's the Rishi Ball Park, which we talked about. Um, I've been to all of this. Okay, well, <laughs> there's the Classic Park, which is maintained. There's Erie Town Community Center, the skate park, the dog park. Um, there's the Eastlake Gardens. Um, Houston Fisher Pool and Jackson. We could start something. You guys could start your funding. You could do your fundraisers. You could have people come because um, you want to do improvements. These are things Ken and I even talked about two or three years ago when we went with the recreation level at Levy and it went down. Um, Houston Fisher Pool, the JFK Center, um, Surfside Park. I mean, we had a fill in the pool. We had a back fill in the pool because we couldn't maintain it. Taft School Senior Center. I mean, there's all these other places. There's a metro park rule of a rural road for green space, and we're about three, four miles from a metro park. So there are places for people to go. We're not, like, cementing over a green space, <laughs> okay? It's going to be removed, and it's going to come back. And 15 years is a long time for us, but in the life of the city, it's really not that long. So I just want to make sure I understand. You're asking us to put something relatively solid Aside, we'll wait and see if you can be successful in four months. I'm asking you to keep the park freely accessible to the public. This is your best chance at keeping the park freely accessible to the public for 15 years. The ACL proposal, I mean, sounds like an exciting prospect for the city. It sounds great when you say that people are going to you know, fill our restaurants and everything. But that doesn't change the fact that those seven acres won't be freely accessible to the public. And I think that that's what council needs to be valuing is what's going to best benefit our residents. And I think that that's keeping our green space, all of it, not just, you know, 12 out of the 13 places that we have, but all 13 places freely accessible to the public. And I think this proposal is your best chance of doing that if the city can't do that work itself. Mr. Zern? Um, I had a question. Uh, it is directed towards um, Mrs. Trevisano. I'm looking at the map of the of the uh, the park, Central Park, and I cannot see why both of these can't exist. There are. No, say it out loud. I, was <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like they're taking two ball fields. The third ball field is actually pointing away from the soccer fields. Um, <clears throat> 
So I don't see how this land can't be used for the benefit, the greatest benefit of the city, and that is a fully funded American Croatian Lodge who can definitely follow through on, on, on what they're saying. And I love I love how excited everybody is and, and how everyone wants to save this park that has been neglected for years. Um, I don't see how they just can't both coexist. And we have the best of both worlds. We have funding and the people coming in into our city from the Croatian Lodge, and, and then we have our parks fixed up. Uh, or, you know, the rest of the other side of the park fixed up. I don't... I don't understand how that's not an option. I guess I never said it wasn't an option. Um, I'm here to represent East Lake Community Partners and the proposal that we've submitted. Um, I nobody has, you know, requested any sort of compromise position or asked for a compromise position. And from where I stand, if we can keep all seven acres freely accessible to the public, then that's, I mean, my first choice. Um, but if the only other choice we had is some sort of negotiation, then, I mean, I, like I said, I never said that that wasn't an option. Yeah, if, if, I'm under, if I'm misunderstanding here, somebody by all means correct me. But just replacing backstops isn't going to work for a softball league. They need the whole field fenced in, am I correct? You'd have to replace the fencing entirely. So I've learned some things about softball recently. Um, from what I've learned, as long as they have backstops and an infield, they can play. They can play, but would leagues be interested in that? I mean, I know, like, for your church picnic or something, yeah, but for a serious league wanting to come, they want, they want the fence out in the back so they can so they know when they hit a home run, you know? So um, What we've talked about, it's in, like, phase two of the proposal, which are... Displays that I, you know, designated, I guess, more like funding. Um, if we can get rec leagues to start playing on those uh, softball fields, then that's a revenue source for us. Something we'd like to see down the line is to have portable fencing. So um, that's the fencing that you'll see at, like, Todd Field, that, like, orange fencing that you can put up and, you know, move and change. Um, and we would like to, you know, down the line do something like that because that allows you to, you know, set up the portable fencing so you can hit your home runs, but then you can also take it down to let the field be, um, you know, totally open. And if that's something that leagues want, I think that's also something that leagues could purchase. Any other questions or comments from council? Okay. At this time... There's nothing under miscellaneous. We will open the floor to recognition of the public. It's a half hour, three minutes per person. I remind everybody to please speak clearly, your name and address. All comments will be directed towards the chair. Do not involve personalities. Anybody wishing to speak? Can I jump in here just for one second, please? Mr. Rutino. So nobody has reached out on either side <coughs> to see if you can coexist. Is that correct? Is anybody here from the lodge? Have you reached out to this, this this group at all to see if there's some way you guys can coexist? Has that been done at all? So, I mean, I would hope somewhere between the two of them that if this is a project that you want, and I, I feel, from what my knowledge is, that that field three is there, and the fields on um, Washington are there if the school board permits it. I, I get your idea that you want the whole part for green space, and I, I'm just wondering why we can't find uh, have a meeting to coexist and at least reach out and see if that's an option rather than where we are today. And it's either do this or give that to them. And to me, just again, I, I look too far back, and I, I can't help but look back and say and, and the, the volunteer status of it and the, the definite status, and how can we have it reached out to each other? And, Try to find out if there's a way that both these entities can coexist and benefit, and then to me, that's the full benefit of the community. So, um. we just need some more time to put together a joint proposal. <laughs> yes, sir. Can I have this? Oh, it's not mine. <laughs> yes, sir. I need your name and address. Hey, hey Mr. Chairman, Bill Polichak, 86 Piners Boulevard. Uh, I've got a bunch of disjointed notes, so I apologize if it's a, not as coherent as it should be, but I'm 
want to first start off with what Mr. Rubitino says, with what he's done, with his crew to keep the city running, with the budget he has. I agree with his, what he's saying in, in that respect. I mean, he does know those kinds of things. Um, I come here independent. I don't happen to be on the ECP or anything like that. Uh, however, I will support them if they happen to get the contract. There are people there asking about funds. Well, I certainly wouldn't submit funds to something that they don't have a lease for because there would be a, a service charge for me to pay that, and then they would re, re, excuse me, refund the money and then have to pay another service charge, and that wouldn't be fair to anyone. But I'm sure there would be a lot of people who would donate, and we, I'm sure we could make some type of sort of shortfall, uh, make that up. Um, so I do understand those types of concerns. But um, the problem is, is that we're talking about a sure thing, and I have no opposition to the ACL's lease. I mean, they can bring world-class soccer. Um, however, unless you're you know, watching Leicester soccer in the Premier League, maybe some people don't care at that level of soccer. Or they don't care for softball, for that, or we keep hearing about Field 3. That's great that that's still owned, if that's owned by the city and the people can use it. However, my concern comes for green space. Uh, again, a lot of people don't like soccer, but families like places for their kids to play. What my concern is is having a free green space with possibly a playground, those types of things for kids in that neighborhood. I don't live anywhere near there. I live near Bruce Yee, and I, we, I take my kids sledding there, so I understand how badly that looks, and I understand why we would want to continue to beautify the city. However, I would say that perhaps if this proposal, and I haven't heard all the details, it hasn't been presented that I, I know of that, or I've heard, what the ACL proposes in writing and what we're getting as a city. I would hope that we would get more than a dollar and the promise of a world-class soccer field in 15 years. My thought would be is, as a compromise, would be is, gee, maybe they scale back a field, take a field out of there, and maintain a playground for the kids of the neighborhood and things like that. As a concerned citizen, that would be one of my main things, and I think that's one of the key things that you know, the ECP is just trying to do in its own right. So it, I think there's a lot of people in the city that don't want the either or, but they would like to see some type of sound give back in the ACL lease to the rest of the city. And that, that's primarily why I'm here and why I'm concerned. Yeah. I would like to have both. Absolutely. I think they're both good. I think they both could do it. Anybody else? Yeah. Byron Floyd. Um, Name and address, please. Uh, I live at 9760 Mountain View Drive, Willoughby, Ohio, right now. I lived in Eastlake till last year. Um, I come in as uh, as a kid. I played there uh, at CB in uh, the Eastlake Boys Softball League. Um, and as I talk, about, you know, I know history is history, and the future is the future. But when we talk about you know the history of the city, I think it's important. Um, <clears throat> I know I'm sure some of you know, a lot of you probably don't, uh, that Eastlake ha had one of the most successful youth softball organizations, the most successful youth softball organization in the country. They won 14 world uh, championship tournaments uh, between like the early uh, 80s and late 90s. Um, and it was all, you know, that was home base for that. Um, <clears throat> boys softball, youth boys softball in general, pretty much around here does not exist anymore. It does exist in other places in the state and in the country. Um, so, you know, the, you know, I come in, I think the history there is important. And obviously, for someone like me, it would be sad to see it go, but if, I mean, if, if whatever's best for the city, either way. Um, the, only, the only problem, you know, the only problem I see, like Bruce E., obviously that's got a lot of great history of softball as well. My dad used to play in the firecracker down there and all that. So that's a field that definitely, you know, we could we could utilize and, and be interested in, in fixing up and making better a park, get the uh, the space beyond the outfield would be good. But as far as uh, CP goes. Um, you know, I, I, as far as names you said for uh, donations for the roof and stuff, you know, names we do have names. We have Ken's Park Hill Roofing that's going to put the roof on the pavilion. Uh, we have Scorch Plumbing that's agreed to do any plumbing that might be needed inside the building if, if necessary. Uh, we also have, um, <coughs> what was the other one? Oh, yeah, Demelta for dirt. Uh, they're going to they're gonna donate the, the, the dirt for the infields. Um, Willoughby Supply, um, Jeff Romanini over there, uh, who we spoke with, uh, who's all about youth leagues and just recreational leagues in general whether it's softball, baseball, soccer, flight, football, any of that stuff that can be done over there. Uh, he said, anything you need, let me know. Uh, another uh, person of Eastlake who has a big business in Eastlake, Pepco, uh, Mr. Borky. Um, I haven't spoken with him recently. I did reach out to him. I guess he's, he's going to be giving me a call back at some point. Um, but a few years ago, we had discussed uh, CP because uh, I was involved a little bit down there with the, the boys league that was dwindling. I was trying to help, that get, help out with that. Uh, but Mr. Borky owns Victory Park over on the west side. He puts a lot of money into Victory Park. It's a big, a big baseball, softball complex over there. And uh, 
I'm sure he'd be more than willing. He's a big a supporter of the Hall of Fame to help out over any stuff. So um, there is funding that's out there. We just haven't had enough time to quite end with the thing with the lease to really, for sure, say that we have it. So. I'm sorry. What was the roofing company? Park Hill. Ken's Park Hill Roofing. And Willoughby Supply. And then Willoughby Supply. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else in the public willing to speak up? Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> my name is Marco Mazar, Vice President, Board of Directors, Croatian Lodge, 34900 Lakeshore Boulevard, East Lake Ohio, 44094. Uh, I've made many of these previous statements on, on different platforms, and some of you may have already heard some of this information. Uh, however, I would like to go on record to say some of these, these things openly to the public. It is great to see Eastlake residents share the same level of passion for the city of Eastlake as the American Croatian Lodge. The city of Eastlake is currently going through some economic hardship due to several factors. One factor is failure of numerous proposed levies, which has led to a decrease in city services. This has impacted many things, such as city staffing cuts, budget decreases for all public entities, school closures, and our neighborhood parks not being maintained properly. From the Lodge's standpoint, it is important for us to operate our business and have our nonprofit organization operate in a safe area where the city has all its amenities to offer its residents, businesses, and anyone affiliated with the city. It is also my understanding that the Lodge has spent millions, plural, in property and city taxes in the past 32 years and is just as disappointed as many of the residents here with the current outcome and predicament and want to be part of the solution and show that we are part of the community and truly care for its well-being. We are trying to come to the table and offer a solution to the problem. Originally, the Lodge has in inquired about purchasing this property to expand the kids' soccer program, which is, in fact, open to the public after watching the land decline. Other investment ideas for this area, along with the school board property, has been discussed, such as a retirement center or a complete sports program. We have also suggested having a festival every year and on, on the entire campus with half of the proceeds benefited East Lake Schools. If the property is offered for sale, then there is a completely different set of procedures that could change the circumstances. Clearly, the Lodge is concerned about the potential developers purchasing the land, the city rezoning the property, and the possibility of low-end housing being built on this property if it does go for sale. Not only would this cause a depreciation of value for the largest property, but it would question the safety of our children that are not only Croatian descent, but from all kinds of descent, and most East Lake residents' children. Please keep in mind that in this lease agreement, this is for the purpose of a non-profit kids' soccer program. And I would like to emphasize this is a, not a semi-professional league or professional league with large revenue streams or profits and given us the flexibility to perform something that is unfeasible financially. The Croatian Lodge is keeping the East Lakes community interest in mind with this deal. The playground will not be dismantled. The representatives are working closely to ensure that the benefit of the community at large. Even on the proposed diagram of the city, the playground, basketball court, skate park are all left intact. The Lodge stated that they, we will work with the small kids program to give them access at cost. And we have already discussed in our program and implemented an East Lake Kids discount for our soccer program. It's not only offer this program, this great program, to our community members, but to everybody of Lake County. We want to be able to offer the same level of services to the kids. In agreement, the Croatian Hall would also have their own access along the back and we could use our own parking lot. The Lodge would be willing to work with East Lake in any other way to make sure the property and the share risk investment into the land and make it a better place. As, as it is well known, many residents have. I'm sorry, I gotta cut you off. No, that's fine. Mark, Mark. That's fine. I appreciate your comments. I'm sorry, but there are a lot of people here. Okay. Anybody else? Name and address, please. My name is Christina White. I live at 35299 Beach Park. Um, I don't understand, like, if, if, like, I just heard him talking and I was like, Comments up to the chair, please. I just heard him talking, and I'm just wondering if he doesn't, if they don't get rid of the playground, and they do have access, if we do have access to the space and everything, I'm for that. You know, as long as we do have access to the space. But if it's too like, we don't, we can't go there or whatever, or we have to rent it out to go there, then I just don't think that's 
fair for us. Is you know, I mean, I've lived here forever. My grandmother was first. I mean, she we were here before ninety one was built. So you know what I'm saying? And it hurts. You know, I mean, I know you're discouraged. You know, because it does. It hurts to see the town go down so much. I mean, and you're sitting there saying that for sure thing, for sure thing. Well, what's that for sure thing that people are going to come to our restaurants and people are going to come and stay at hotels because of a kid's soccer league coming here? So that's not even a for sure thing with her proposal, you know what you're saying. So we don't know. You know, all I know is that I want to make sure that our city is benefiting from a deal. And a dollar isn't benefiting us at all. Green space, that is. I mean, I like to go ahead and say, hey, yeah, I live here, and we have this park over here, and it looks nice, and I'm there, and this and that, and people, families want to move here, and they're saying, hey, look, check this out. This park is over here. This is a beautiful place, you know? Not like, well, where's the park's at? Well, I don't know. There's one over there with graffiti all over it, you know? It's about this big. You know, I mean, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm here for. I just want to make sure our city's benefiting. That's, that's all I care about. You know, because it's like, I know I'm putting all kinds of money into my house because I plan to stay here. You know, I plan to live my days here, and that's it. But, come on, the only place that's really benefiting here is Walmart. It seems like, I mean, seriously, you know, anymore nowadays. So, that's just, that's what all I have to say. And I hope that, you know, even if a coexisting plan can come, that's even, I never even thought of it, and I think that's a great idea, too, you know? I mean... Who's to say in a couple more years, you know, we could even put up um, batting cages? I mean, there's no batting cages anywhere around here. You I mean, you could totally do something like that even, get some money off of it. You know, the only place, think about it, where is there batting cages anymore? pup has gone. You know, there's, that's it. Over right over here at uh, Lost Nation. Other than that, you got to go to the west side pretty much. I mean, think about it. People look all over the place. We were there playing with the girls' softball league. And we got, I was actually one of the ones that got kicked out because the boys. Willowix floods all the time. They would love to come over and be like, hey, our, our place is flooded again. You know, hey, can we come use your field? You know, I mean, just talk about it. There's so many opportunities, so many things. So, Thank you. Anybody else? Name and address. Angelo Trevisano, 341-86 Waldmer Drive. The first thing I just wanted to emphasize with this plan, like I really appreciate like dozens of questions um, that have been asked about this. Um, on, I think it was Monday of last week before the council meeting, Jessica and I received an email at 1.47 p.m. to submit a park proposal by 5 p.m. for a seven-acre park just to have the vote postponed. It was contingent on that, almost like we were held hostage. If you want to stop this vote, you need to submit us a fully, I'm sorry, a fully, a fully developed park plan in three hours in a work day, on a Monday, which is like the worst day of the week, I think, at least for both of us. So we had to set a lot of our work aside and come up with an entire park proposal for seven acres. And I think that the proposal that we've submitted to this committee goes above and beyond even what, what most cities are trying to do with the recreation department. And just casually starting a GoFundMe um, online campaign, we've raised $520 in just a couple days. We haven't actively attempted to really fundraise. So I think that just shows if you help us light this fire and get this going, this is definitely something that we can do. Mm -hmm. And just in a couple of days, we've raised more money than the city's been able to obtain in levy funding. I mean, to be, to be serious, I mean, maybe the, the entire community doesn't want to each chip in a dollar per $100,000 in their home value, but there are so many residents that we just talk to, that we see walking through the park, that we meet just day to day, walking through the community, that do want to donate more than just a dollar to see their recreation and parks brought back to life, and at least competitive with the surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first thing. The second thing, I think that that's great, that other members also want to see our parks redeveloped. Right after Jessica had ACL surgery, we went and visited every park in the city of Eastlake and took over 300 pictures, and that was back in June before any of this happened. So, yeah, we would love to help rejuvenate each and every single park. We kind of got this issue dumped on our laps, kind of like by a surprise, and 
we never knew if this deal was alive or dead. You know, this is the third time this issue has been brought back to committee. We, I mean, we never know if this thing is going through or not. But going back to the idea of can we all coexist, I know that there's a Nike site that's 10 acres. I don't know who's going to be able to build structures there, but that could be, I, I think, right now the old JFK Senior Center is there. There is a pavilion there. There are bocce ball courts there that's not used. It's by where the school district parks their busing. I think that if we really want to think about the best space where we could put all these things, that could be a great location if that was really something that council was really interested in, honestly interested. So thank you for letting me uh, share those comments. Next. Chris Cronyak, 1278 Waverly Road. Um, I really appreciate the idea of what you're talking about, Nick, and I think that's really important. Yeah, please. Comments come to the chair, not to the table. I was really impressed with what our service director had to <laughs> <Thank> say. You. <laughs> um, you know, I was very ambivalent on this when I first got involved with this because um, on paper it sounds fantastic. And Marco, yeah. sorry, <laughs> ACL is fantastic. Um, and I like this idea of compromising. However, I really wish that council and finance would have already done what we're doing. Because we're asking the questions that could have and should have been asked already about compromise. Is there a little bit of a give and take? Can you give more than a dollar? Will you do some fields and some green space as opposed to a dollar? Those types of questions are what we're asking and should have been answered already. Asked already, excuse me. Um, I'm just kind of curious as to the as to why specifically Mr. Floyd would be required to hold insurance or bonded in the city considering the man who cut the grass for however long it was, was just a resident with a lawnmower and took care of it personally. I don't believe he was ever bonded or insured, I could be wrong, um, and licensed with the city. I think that's an irrelevant question. I'm curious as to if every person at EPAL or the EPAL board is covered by insurance, only because that was what was questioned. Yes, they are. Okay, so every, every EPAL... member of the board. Okay, so every board member, but every not employee. Okay. Every board member and employee is covered by our insurance. Okay. So you have one large insurance covering everyone. Okay. Curiosity question. Um, I appreciate Bruchy Park, but we don't own it. We lease it. Mm -hmm. um, our land in the city of East Lake that we own is drastically deteriorating. And that's an issue for me. Sure, we have parks, but we don't own them. The one that we do, which has turned out to be a rather fantastic thing, um, agreement, is with the Y. However, I see the park being completely run by the Y in about five years. And that will mean no control by our residents, by our council, or by any committee. Okay, we're giving, we're giving it away. Um, As far as the volunteering goes, and I understand volunteers, well, believe me, I run a group since 08 of nothing but volunteers. And sure, you get about 25, 30 people doing 99% of the work, and that's generally how it goes. Um, but I don't think that that's, I don't think that that's a deal breaker. I don't think it should be a deal breaker. Um, part of Willoughby is volunteer. Volunteer and business driven, it was founded by my mother. And, um, very proud of where it is today. All volunteers. Here, here. Thank you. Anybody else, please? If I may. Unless my figures from the county are wrong, the city does own 7.11 acres of Bruce The only thing they don't own is the hill itself and where the temporary fire department was at the time that they uh, repaired the bridge on Lakeshore Boulevard. So I just want to interject that in there. That 7.11 acres of that property does belong to the city of Slate. Could I ask what part of that park is used? Please raise your hand Sorry. and be recognized. Chris Cronia, 1278. Um, is it the fields that we own or do we own areas in the back that are not usable at this time? They have trees, they have foliage, they have things that are not usable, which, as you pointed out, we can't cut our grass, so our, we can't develop this space. How much of the fields and the space 
that is being used as ours. Well, we can't develop the side of the hills. I think is, is part of the land there. I'm not I'm not 100 percent positive, but from where the right field line is up to the horse farm mm -hmm, right. belongs to the horse farm. Right. Everything north of that, including the wood line, how far up in the wood line I can't say, but I'm sure that the boundaries on Hillcrest, the lots are 160 feet deep. So if you go from Hillcrest 160 feet deep from that point on, that bowl that's there belongs to the city. So is it developable up on the side of a hill? I don't know. Okay. I'm not a builder. But the, the property itself, in and of itself, 7.11 acres of it belongs to the city. So I'm not trying to, I'm just no, trying no, no, to I'm point out that it picture. does belong to the city. Gotcha. And again, if I get over to Community Center Central Park, I still, you know, I, I have not heard from... The Croatian Lodge or anybody else, I'm sorry, I have to address you, um, <laughs> that there's no park there. I, I still don't know where, where we're, where you're losing a certain amount of green space, and I guess that's the wording that you guys, that, that your group wants to use, but you still have green space there. You're going to have majority of the green space still available. The park's not coming out that's directly behind the community center, to my knowledge, and beyond the proposed soccer fields still is park area. I mean, it's... You're losing, a, there's a portion of it that's being developed, but there's still a portion of it still there. I guess. And you're not losing that aspect of it, I guess. I'm sorry, because I was talking here, because I'm confused at where I'm going to. So. <laughs> this is, I guess, more of an answer as a resident. Yeah. That, right. <laughs> um, that's fine. Um, I guess I don't really, because the ACL proposal was so vague, um, it's been really unclear when there is green space, what's going to be fenced off, what's not fenced off. And I agree with you. I don't know either. So, so. it's hard for me to, yeah. I'm on the same boat. Okay. I'm going to address the insurance issue with you. Today we live in a Sioux, Sioux happy society. And I applaud you for volunteering to cut the grass. But if he's up there cutting the grass, the lawnmower hits a rock, and it kicks out and hits somebody in the head, who are the parents going to look to suit? He's got to cover himself. That's my concern. Okay. Let's go around here. Yes, sir. <coughs> Name and address, please. John Zuch, 975 Manring Road. I'd like to know how this is pushed on us. You know, a dollar, a dollar a year. You know, for 15 years, and the Croatian Lodge is like a, it's like a club. And we have other soccer clubs in our area. How is it going to benefit our youth? Uh, are we going to have access to it always? Or are there going to be admission charges? And uh, and it's going to benefit the Croatian Lodge. I, I, all I see it is benefiting them. Not Eastlake. Not any of the restaurants. I just see it. It's a big benefit to them, and they're getting that land for it for free. free. That's where I'm an angry about. It. Okay. One, you in on that one? Um, <clears throat> well, the dollar of the year lease is very. Um, it's what we've done on several occasions. It's how we get um, people involved, the businesses involved in our community. They have to be given paid. We do it with the Houston Metro Board. Um, the YMCA 501c3 leases it four months from a dollar a year. In exchange for that, they put in, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong in the numbers, I, I, I want to say it's between 80, around $80,000 to run the pool. They take care of it. The other reason why the pool is open is because we get a corporate donation. Um, somebody made a comment about the pool, what will happen with the pool. We don't have a recreational area. The city does not pay anything to operate that pool because we don't have the money. Okay. If that corporation pulls out and people don't buy pool passes, there's not going to be any benefit to the YMCA. So eventually, that park may close. That's what, as your council president, being a lifelong resident of East Lake, that's what I see happening with the pool. Because volunteerism and donations are only going to get us so far. But that's the dollar a year lease. We also do it with the community center. Uh, not the community center. Well, we do it with the EPAL center. Um, we also do it with the senior center. And the senior center takes... EPAL took over all the expenses for the community center. The senior center took over all the expenses for uh, the senior center. They pay all the utilities. They do the maintenance. Um, the reason why we do the lease is so we can keep the property. <coughs> we don't want to give away all our assets. We want to keep them. This is a way to have them to be maintained. A lot of times, improvements made to them, and then they revert back to the city. 
And our whole goal is hopefully that in 15 years, things will get a little bit different. We don't want to give away Central Park. It's not for sale. It's never been for sale. Um, and we don't want to sell it because we want to keep that as an asset for the city. So, but that's how the dollar always comes up. It's, there's an exchange there. Um, it may not translate right onto paper, but it's, it's, we've done it repeatedly, historically, and we benefit from it, and the residents benefit from it. So this was not pushed on us either? Yeah, it wasn't pushed on us. I don't know where the pushing is. Well, I don't know where the push is. It just came out of the blue and, and read about it. Yeah. It's, <coughs> please, it's not for the girl, for our council clerk to record the comments, I didn't mean to address this. Okay, the last thing I want to do is get into a debate here. Mr. Zern? Um, I had a, a few questions for um, uh, Creation Watch representative. Um, uh, has there been a time frame established when the soccer fields would start to be prepared? Um, and also, fencing has been mentioned by half the people. Will there be fencing put up around the soccer fields? Yeah, the diagram shows <coughs> the fence and where it would be lower and will it, where it will be higher around the perimeter. Um, there will be lower level fences for people to have access to go across um, to walk through it. <clears throat> and regarding the, the timeline, the timeline has not been uh, put in detail just because of the uh, inability to, to, to kind of make a, a, a sound decision on which, which avenue we're going to go through or which decision we're going to make. So if this doesn't get passed till June, then obviously the timeline will get pushed back. I will hear it first, then I'll come back over to you. Oh, I didn't just... Again, I need your name and address. Christina White, 35299 Beach Park. I'd like to make a statement about the comment that that gentleman just said, and then you were talking about with the dollar lease. All the dollar leases that we do do is for benefiting the city, though. Like, Eve Health benefits our city because it takes care of the children and has activities for the kids and everything like that, and that's benefiting our city. You know, our kids would go there whenever and pay for a dance, or they have fundraisers or whatever. They, they have something going on all the time for the, the kids in our city. Um, same thing goes for Fisher Pool. I mean, anybody can go get a pool pass. It's just like the same thing as East Lake would be running it. You go get a pool pass, and then you're welcome to go there whenever you want. You know, I go there for free because I'm a Y member. You know, so... Yeah, they, the dollar lease would make sense with them because that is better for our city. You know, absolutely. But going and giving ACL a dollar lease, you know, for, you know, what, for them to go play on a field and we might have to rent or make sure we call them and say, hey, can we go on this field, you know, and them say, no, you can't. Not this, not this, they over book, we're book, we're book, we're book, we're book. But, you know, that's not benefiting the city, you know. So that's what that's the difference to me with the whole dollar leasing. I mean, there's no problem with hey, they, they were like, yeah, you know, come whenever you want. You know, you're you know, we're not gaining nothing off. You can come whenever, or walk the park or whatever like that. I'd be like, oh, well, all right, go ahead, you know. But it does concern me too after the 15 year lease that we are going to be able to keep up with the facility that they put on. I mean, who's to, we don't know where we're going to be in 15 years. I mean, things that haven't been getting better really. They really haven't been. So, I mean, in 15 years, we're still not going to be able to live on that, to be honest. I mean, and the reason why, I mean, a lot of people aren't passing levies and everything like that because they're not seeing anything being done here, really. I mean, you guys see it because you're, you, you know what's going on. But we just drive on the roads and just go around driving on roads and that, that's all we see. We see, you know, garbage or, you know, cracks in the this or this and that and this is, you know. So... That's why a lot of people aren't passing stuff, you know, because they, they're, they're not informed enough. There's not, like, recreations and stuff. So they don't want, if there's nothing fun happening, nobody wants to put stuff into something that's not, fun's not happening. That's, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill Polachek, 86 Pine <coughs> Boulevard. Uh, it's a question and statement together. Uh, I guess the question is that, I understood that there were two parcels being submitted as part of the lease, and many of us do understand that a nonprofit usually gets some type of dollar lease because it's, you know, it's it's a it's just part of the legal agreement. For a dollar, we get this, but usually there are other things specified in a statement of work 
saying, here's what the city benefits. And, you know, and there are intangible benefits, such as people coming to the city, and, you know, there's an argument of, you know, are most of the people in these leagues, are they here in the city of East Lake? so we're not getting that much traffic coming in for these types of things. But the primary concern would be, again, is what parcels are exactly involved to see a, you know, some type of formal statement of work that uh, the ACL is, is uh, presenting to the city and what we are getting other than, you know, the fields being improved, which is, which is a good thing. But again, in 15 years, after depreciation, things like that, we don't know what that real value will be to the city in, in the future. However, if there were some other tangible things given to the city, if there were parts of the property that were, such as the playground area or something, that they were going to say, as part of this work, we will maintain, uh, instead of the city resources, which we obviously have none, if they were going to maintain those things or things like that, if that were part of a formal statement of work, I think there would probably be less, I don't want to say opposition, but maybe apprehension to that. So I, I guess my main question, though, was about the direct parcels involved and what is left out of there, which I think is part of what ECP is primarily concerned with. What green space do we have left? So thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Clammer. The lease does... Um, you know, so part of this, just to clarify, because I know a lot of times the ill will happens because maybe it's the ECP was when they're talking to their neighbors, giving their neighbors the impression that this, somehow this is happening without you know the public being made aware. And we started discussing this in December in committee meetings, um, and it's been there was committee meeting December one, December eight, February twenty second, then it moved into council meetings, and council put it on three different meetings. Um, until we, at the last minute, had the proposal. And, and I understand that they felt like it was a last minute request for a proposal, but it had been ongoing since December 1. And, and I think, if I'm, this is my recollection, discussions had been loosely had before the election of last year. So we're at a six month period, and I know on behalf of my client that council did everything they could to make sure that the public was aware of these things. But as far as the lease goes, I mean, we have the dollar lease, but we do have in the agreement that the property is going to be improved substantially consistent with whatever the sketches were. I don't have those. Things. But we included in the provision that says, in the sole of improved and substantially consistent in the sole discretion of the city. So the city has the sole discretion to determine whether that's substantially consistent with whatever we talked about, with the drawings attached, and any additional improvements reasonably demanded by the city. So the city has this has had a cooperative relationship with them since December 1, and, and the goal was that once we finalize this portion of it, we reduced it from 20 to 15 because of the residents' concerns, then we had this provision there, that there would be this give and take with uh, the, the community center, or the creation center, and the building department, and the community if there needs to be any green space. So all that's accommodated for in this lease, so I don't want the residents to think that, that it was overlooked, because it wasn't. It's, it's included in here and it's included in there for a reason. And then when we did have some back and forth about the community having access, the Creation Center, in my experience, was receptive to that. We included a provision in there that says that they're going to provide good faith efforts to accommodate other youth soccer leagues affiliated with the landlord, which is us, on a case-by-case -case basis. And we, we, in everybody's defense, we put in there upon reasonable terms and conditions because the, the plan is and sometimes things don't go as planned, but the hope is for the community like Eastlake and a longtime resident like the Croatian Center that we can find a system that works, that gets the improvements, that allows them to have access for their youth leagues and allows, as things develop, the city to have access um, for its youth leagues at no cost, which is, which is in the lease agreement. So to the extent that there was a misimpression from anybody that these things weren't accommodated for, they were accommodated. And they've been accommodated for since December of last year. Um, and I think they'll still be accommodated for going forward. So just to clarify those things, um, I don't want anybody to get the misimpression that anything is jammed on anybody's throat because that certainly wasn't anybody's fault. At this point, I'm going to take one more comment. Chris Kranja, 1278 Waverly Road. Um, and I can appreciate that you're saying that it wasn't, you know, shoved on anyone. However, since this began, nobody's heard anything about it. And I'm telling you from a resident's perspective, regardless of your feelings of social media or News Herald or the news channel, I would think that such a big decision like this 
could have and should have been put forth to the people. And when I requested letters be sent out to the people that live around the park, Mr. Morley said that, that he would be amenable to that. Nobody's received a letter yet. So nobody's even been informed that this has even been an issue or, or a discussion. So I guess with that type of history of not putting it out there and, and communicating it to the residents, not even one article in the Gazette except yes, for Mr. Spotton no. now, um, except for Mr. Spotton, has this ever been discussed? And to say, well, we meet on Tuesdays, you should come, that's not acceptable. And because of that behavior, one could then be concerned that in the future, going from this point forward, in the discussions that you hope to have with the Croatian LUD, which I, I think is wonderful that they would be amenable to suggestions, I'm concerned that still the residents aren't going to be informed in totality. And that's what my concern is. At this point, we have nothing in, in under miscellaneous. I am going to poll council at this moment. He's got a question over there. I said I'd allow one more comment, and that was it. We are way past our 30 minute mark on public comment. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah. I think three minutes would be fine because when you did suggest you're out of order, minutes, sir, I'm sorry. I'll leave. That's not a problem. But when you did say that everyone would have 30 minutes to talk, Excellent. everyone at this table here had plenty of time to talk. Yeah. The and public talk portion of the meeting also. is 30 minutes, three minutes per person, 30 minutes total. Okay. And I also stated that I would allow one more comment, which I did. All right. We'll allow one more, and that's it. <clears throat> Robert White, 35299 Beach Park Avenue. I've heard the lawyer on more than once tonight say it'd be zero or little cost to Eastlake. That sounds kind of like the zero or little cost to the stadium that we had. Yeah. That put us in big giant debt. That is a total irrelevant statement. Yeah. Case, case by case, case. I'm stadium. talking, please. <laughs> I'm addressing you. He said it'd be a case by case whether they want to allow a league into their fields. It never says they have to. It says it's discretionary. So they can turn away everybody they feel like as soon as that lease is signed. They can say, we're sorry, we have no room for you guys. And we'll push the city out. And if there's an agreement between them, that's a different story. But i, I got to see where the land that they want to develop is if it cuts off from EPAL going through or not. Because I personally go through there like four times a week with my dog and my kids. And does Eastlake own the Washington Playground or is that the... The Washington School. Who owns the school? School board. Will be Eastlake. Okay, so Eastlake does not own that playground. No. So then in the future, they could say, we want this land, so we have to remove this playground, and there we lose another playground. The other ballparks aren't even Eastlake's either. Those belong to the school board. So therefore, they want to take all of Eastlake's ballparks. Right? How many, how many ballparks no. are in that the Central Park? Field 3 is partially owned by the city of Eastlake. Partially. Partially, so Partially. It, that means they only own half of it, if we'll say half. You can't go any more than 50%, so that means they can take half the field, and you can't play half of a field. What are you going to do there? So essentially, you're going to be giving away all of our green space for a dollar a year for them to profit and Eastlake get nothing. Well, we might you haven't shown one thing that Eastlake's going to profit off of out of this. Well, that's, everyone goes to our restaurants here anyways. They're always aligned. Okay. All right, at this point, I'm going to pull council as a whole. Either table or reconsider. Uh, Mr. Myers. Can we ask what you're considering? I'm sorry, am I allowed to ask that? No, you're not. Okay. So I don't know what the consideration is. Huh? Reconsider. Reconsider. Mr. Kasuna. I may go first. My ideal outcome from this meeting, as Mr. Rubertino suggested, I think that the, uh, our, what, what's your? ECP. ECP. ECP, like ECP should, we should table the matter, say, for two weeks, so we'll have the council meeting next week and we won't vote on it next week. And we'll have another committee meeting the following week. 
that will allow the two parties to get together and speak, and that would be my ideal outcome, I think, is just to um, allow that extra time at this point. Mr. Zern. Uh, you took my exact thoughts. Um, I think it should be table postponed for two weeks, period. And I think the uh, two parties need to talk and work it out. It's If you look at the map, it's pretty clear they can both coexist and uh, both help the city instead of hurting the city by eliminating one of the parties. Okay. Mr. Spahn. Paulson, okay. Mr. Hayflin. I've listened to both. Um, <coughs> I've listened to, you know, seen what the Croatian League has sponsored, the DCP. Um, I keep going back to what the community in the over the years past, you know, levy after levy being shot down, <coughs> uh, even a rec levy that we put on a few years back, which would have generated a, you know, the average homeowner needs like $1.25 per month. And the residents of this city basically said, no, they didn't want to put anything towards recreation. Um, I am a firm believer that I think that we should just move it forward to next week, Tuesday, and have a vote on it. Uh, my opinion, I look at both lease agreements, and I'm in favor, and I will state it right now, of the Croatian League's proposal. That's my opinion. Um, uh, actually, I kind of am a blend of both. I think we do need to move it forward. I think we owe it to the Croatian Lodge um, to move forward with this thing and give them an opportunity to do what they need to do. I also think that there's going to be enough vacant property there that the ECP group can continue with their funding and their planning, and they can still present council with that section of property that is not going to be being utilized by the ACL. But I don't think we need to delay the ACL. And I believe this originally came back. I do believe it was around election time. Um, um, so we've been doing this for several months. Um, so I do. I would like to see a blend. You should be ashamed of yourselves. I, do, I would like to see a blend. I think we do need to move forward with the ACL. That's my opinion. Okay. Four of our members have said that they would vote to table it, even if we move it forward. It would be a waste of council. Did, did John ever say what? That's all we got. I skipped ahead. Um, just for the record, I like the I like the compromise idea. I, I think it's I, th I think it benefits everyone for the two groups to work together. Uh, that being said, I, I don't have I think as long as the, they're willing to work together, I don't have any issues with moving forward. All right, let's pull the committee. Mr. Hayflin. I say move it forward to a vote on Tuesday night. Mr. Zerm. Table it for two weeks. The issue is going to be tabled for two weeks after two weeks. We, we've, got to, we've got to move on this. I don't think we have enough votes to pass it through council at this time. We'll need to, I guess, officially ask the mayor to take a lead. Right. On hand, so. We'll have to. With that, motion's table. Two weeks. Meetings adjourned. Seven thirty.